In this video, I want to give you a brief overview of PowerWF and some demos of various aspects of the product. The target user of PowerWF is the IT system administrator. Its goal is to help lower costs and improve uptime of IT operations. Its uses can be threefold. One is to automate daily tasks, monitor system health, and implement best practices to automate the service desk. The technology stack that PowerWF is built on is PowerShell plus Windows Workflow that makes the PowerWF framework. So why we choose this combination for our technology stack? Well, PowerShell provides us an extensible automation engine that's both incredibly powerful and has extensive industry support. There's PowerShell command lists that range from SharePoint to Exchange to Hyper-V to VMware, and the list goes on. There's a very active community to both learn from and pull examples on how to use these command lists. Workflow provides us a visual representation of the business process. It's self-documenting, it's easy to modify, it's dynamic, and you tend to think about what you want and not how to do it. So in short, PowerShell gives us the power and Workflow is easy, and what we wanted was an easy to use yet powerful tool. Administrators need to automate their daily tasks. For that, we have Power, Visual PowerShell. It's an integrated development environment. You can create scripts either through drag and drop operations, or if you're familiar with the PowerShell syntax, we have a complete and full featured PowerShell editor complete with color syntax highlighting and IntelliSense. In fact, you can seamlessly move between the two modes with our two-way editing. There's complete interactive debugging in both modes, either Workflow or PowerShell. And we have a PowerShell console, breakpoints, watchpoints, and tracking points to help you diagnose and, and quickly develop your workflows. There's context-sensitive help with examples throughout the tool. And the product has a vast array of deployment options to utilize your workflow once it is completed. But no PowerPoint is as good as a demo, so let's look at the product. So let's highlight some various points of the PowerWF IDE. On the left, you'll notice a toolbox popular with hundreds of activities. PowerWF includes a couple hundred Windows workflow activities, but in addition, it automatically imports all your snap-ins and modules, making the toolbox virtually limitless. With hundreds of activities to choose from, it can be a little overwhelming. That's why there's a search bar. Simply type in parts of the word that you're looking for, and various activities that match it will be displayed. Clicking on an activity will display full context-sensitive help, complete with examples. If you find an example that's useful, just simply click the icon, and the example will be brought into the tool for you to test. If once you've tested it, it does meet your desired needs, you can simply insert it into your workflow. Once it's in your workflow, you can extend it using the, the other activities within the toolbox. In this case, I've actually have some PowerShell commands piped into a Windows workflow. PowerWF can seamlessly move data between PowerShell commandlets and Windows workflow activities. Or you can actually create workflows completely with drag and drop. In this case, I'm going to drag over a pipeline, and I'm going to build up a simple, what we use as a hello world, just get process, sort the data, and get to select the top processes. So I'm just simply dragging the get process over. Now I'm going to pull up the uh, sort object, drag it over, and then finally the select object. You simply use the uh, property grid to modify the various parameters. Now we're going to pipe the data to a web browser, and we'll hit play. Very simple workflow, but you can see how easy it could be done. There are two types of workflows, two types of activities within PowerWF. Windows workflow activities, and if you see the little blue icon, that's actually an activity that's based off PowerShell. Clicking on that actually will now enable the two-way editing. And now I can simply modify the PowerShell, and it will be modified back into the workflow. Or optionally, I can replace the entire block of data as a single script block and then annotate it since I know what this does. This makes my workflows much more readable.
or I can modify it back out. As you can see, we're seamlessly moving between PowerShell and Windows Workflow with this click of a button. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one of my parameters, um, the number of the first n instances, and I'm going to create a, an input parameter that I'm going to ask the user to input to make this workflow dynamic. Simply fill the various parameters out in the wizard. And now we have a dynamic workflow with just a few clicks of the button. Now let's take a quick look at the interactive debugging environment. PowerWF includes breakpoints, stepping, watch points, tracking points, and interaction through the console. So here I'm at a breakpoint. I can examine my PowerShell environment or my local variables. Or I can continue stepping through my workflow. And you also see that the PowerShell environment completely mirrors um, the debugging environment found in workflow. So if you're a scripter and you're looking for breakpoints, um, stepping, etc., it's found within the PowerShell editor. If you're more familiar and more comfortable in the visualization of a workflow, the same, same functionality is found there. The last thing I want to demonstrate is how easy it is to deploy your uh, workflow. In this case, I'm going to create a simple PowerShell commandlet. By filling out a simple form, I have now created a commandlet to get my top processes. Well, I know this video is kind of a little choppy um, and it's not very in-depth. I just really wanted to give you an overall fill of the IDE and how rich it is. If you check out our YouTube videos, you can find in-depth discussions on all the topics found here. In addition to helping you automate your daily tasks, PowerWF is also designed to help you ensure your system uptime. Through its tight integration with System Center Operations Manager, you're able to create management packs complete with discovery rules and thresholds to monitor your system's health. This is perfect for legacy applications, in-house applications, and applications without third-party support where there's no management pack capability of available. There's a complete mashup built into the tool, and it has the ability to publish data quickly and easily through Perfmon, EventLog, and WMI. Here we're going to see a quick video of creating a management pack in within minutes. Let's, uh, let's drop in a, uh, a two SCOM activity at the bottom. Pretty familiar for, uh, from the last uh, uh, from the last demos. Uh, well, again, we'll select a primary key from the list, ID in this case, and uh, and again we'll run. Uh, we're going to run uh, to get the data from that script, dynamically model that in WMI, create a WMI class, and uh, shove our data into WMI. Now, it could have looked like anything. We can go inspect the WMI data if we want to, but what I want to do is I want to send that into SCOM right now. So I'll go to the Deploy menu, select Operations Manager, and we're going to go next, next, next through the wizard. This is going to look a little different from the last time. And now we've got three new screens here. The first one here is we specify what's in the class definition. We pick uh, non-volatile uh, properties, uh, base priority, uh, we can pick uh, machine name. Let's make sure we pick process name. Uh, whether it's responding or not, well, we'll, we'll leave that. In the next screen, we'll pick which which of these properties should be performance counters. These are the volatile uh, volatile data. So handle count would be uh, in that list. Uh, so it's memory count would be in the list. Let's grab a few. Uh, and then the last screen are for thresholds. So we can set. Uh, let's say we want handle count. If it goes over a certain number, then we want to, uh, like the number 800, then we want to create a, a critical, uh, uh, just an example to do that. But you could you could specify more than one of these thresholds, and we'll create more rules. So we'll hit next. Uh, again, we'll, uh, we'll run this uh, every minute. We'll hit finish. And now, uh, just as before, uh, PowerWF has now created, we can go back and look, it's created a management pack and has imported that management pack pro programmatically into SCOM. So now we're just waiting for the system center to realize it's got a new pack. And we can even, in just a second, we'll see a new view pop. And there it is. 
SWI folder. There's a new PS1 test class, and we should see some data pop into this view pretty, pretty shortly. And there's our data, and in the, within a couple of minutes, uh, these will all uh, be green light, red light, uh, based on those uh, thresholds we set in the last. Uh, we could go and look at the, uh, uh, the Health Explorer and see uh, the one rule that we set. Uh, of course, we can set rules for each of these categories. Uh, it's just been uh, initialized so far, uh, but in, in pretty short order, we'll see uh, we'll see some of these be uh, uh, red versus green once that rule gets run by System Center. So we've seen how PowerWF can help you automate your daily tasks and create monitoring solutions for your third-party and legacy applications. But what about your service desk? For this, we've teamed up with the Microsoft System Center Service Manager team. PowerWF has the ability to create management packs to deploy our workflows into the Service Manager's infrastructure. You can create both scheduled and trigger-based workflows. In addition, all the workflows can be also imported and used as native activities within Service Manager's authoring tools. Here's a series of few videos demonstrating these features. So we have a workflow, and I want to make it a system center uh, workflow activity. So simply go to your deployment page, and then you'll find an option underneath Service Manager. Click uh, Activity Library. You'll be presented with a dialog. You can take one or more workflows and put them as a single uh, workflow activity library. In this demo, I'm just going to do one. I'll basically give some inf basic information here and I'll click build. Right now the activity has been built. Then you go over to service manager. You, you choose custom activities. There's the DLL we just created. I'll now make it active. Now that workflow is now a single activity within my authoring tool of service manager. And it's complete with validation rules on the input routine. I picked mandatory here, so now it says red. Now you need to require that. It's that simple. Here we're demonstrating how to create a scheduled workflow. You do a new service manager workflow, give some basic information name the management pack. Here we'll pick schedule. We're going to run it in video time, so 30 seconds. Basically hit next. Now we're going to kind of skip ahead and magically uh, have a workflow here. Um, and now we just go to the system center deploy. The wizard, you're, you follow the wizard. We can actually have the ability to deploy this management pack remotely onto your service manager, so you don't really have to copy it up there. Just hit next, 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 because we filled out the parameters. But you have an ob obviously have an opportunity to modify these as you go. We're now deploying the management pack and copying the workflow DLL up to Service Manager. And then we'll jump up to the Service Manager console. And i uh, give it a second here. And there, it's run a few times. It's really that simple. Well, thanks for staying tuned. Um, there's plenty of more information to be found on our website on PowerWF.com. And, of course, there's much more videos on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash PowerWorkflow. And always follow us on Twitter for the latest product announcements. Um, I wish we could go more in depth, but, you know, 15 minutes is about all YouTube gives us. And if you've made it this long, uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you.